Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. I hope everyone has had a great Christmas and looking forward to a fantastic new year. In today's episode, I thought we would go over my favorite settings to use for a stutter free and high quality Microsoft Flight Sim gameplay. We'll be talking about my in-game settings as well as the NVIDIA control panel and we're not going to leave out VR. So I do have a little trick up my sleeve to get your VR experience a little bit more clearer and just maybe a couple more FPS. So we've got a lot to go over, so stick around for today's episode of 2020 Flight Simmers. Alright, so I thought we would go over my in-game settings first, and then we would move on from there. Now, just for reference, we are using an i7 processor with a 3060 Ti GPU. Starting off the list, we have our VSync. I want to make sure that we turn the VSync in the off position. We're going to control that later in our NVIDIA control panel settings. The render scaling, you can either set at 100. I've had no issues going up to 130 before I started seeing a decrease in FPS. Now, if you are having an issue where you are seeing a main thread bottleneck, so if you're limited by your main thread, you can really help control that by adjusting your terrain level of detail. Now you can see most of the settings that I'm using down below here are in ultra. You can pause the video if you need to. Now we're gonna go all the way down to the bottom and talk about some of the settings that I don't even use at all. Now lens flare, we're gonna make sure that's in the off position, lens corrections off, motion blurs off, depth of fields off, bloom, is one of those features that it really depends on the environment that I'm gonna be flying in. All right, so now that we've gone over my in-game settings, let's talk about the NVIDIA control panel settings for your Microsoft Flight Simulator. So the first thing that I highly suggest that everyone do is create a separate profile. So you would just head over here, once you open the NVIDIA control panel, Go to your manage 3d settings and hop over here to program settings under program settings you can select microsoft flight simulator and this way that any of the settings that you enter here will only be applied to microsoft flight simulator and none of your other programs so let's go down the list here and talk about some of these settings that are going to really either benefit you or can quite hurt you if you turn them on now the first one that we're gonna talk about is the image sharpening and scaling tool. We can use this tool to effectively render the image at a lower resolution and then have NVIDIA scale this up for us and then add sharpness to it. And what this would do is actually give us more FPS but keeping the same image quality. So if you find that you have sort of a lower end PC then you can use this tool and really help get you some better image quality. If you would like more information or a, a better video on using this tool, post a comment down below and I'll consider making one. All right, next is the anneotropic filtering. So we're just gonna leave that as application controlled because we can control that right here in Microsoft. The anti-aliasing FXAA, we're gonna make sure that's in the off position so no matter what you use over here in your global settings, you want to make sure that it still says off in your program settings. Because if you were using global settings here, and in your global settings, you have this set to on, and then we go over here to our program settings now. Because we are using the global settings in our program for Microsoft Flight Simulator, it will now show on. So you just wanna make sure that the setting is correct here in the program settings. If you are gonna be messing around with your global settings, then I just highly recommend to come down here and just turn it in the off position. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. At no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. Okay, next would be the anti-aliasing gamma correction. 
So we can leave that in the on position. Anti-aliasing mode, that's going to be application controlled. Now, anti-aliasing transparency, I use that in multi-sample. I tend to get very good results with that, so I just kind of leave it there. The background application max frame rate. Now, this can be used to help limit the frames of your other programs running in the background. So if you're using multiple monitors or something like that, you may want to use this to help save some GPU use. But I've found that by using this, I have had issues. So go ahead and try it if you are running a lower end system and just need some more FPS, especially if you're running multiple monitors on that system. Next, we're going to talk about the CUDA GPUs. Now, you can leave it set where it is, or you can go down here and check the GPU that you want to use for that. Next, and I think this is one of the biggest performance gains, is by turning the low latency mode into ultra. If you turn it in the on position, well, Microsoft Flight Simulator is not designed to have the built-in low latency. And you have to do some research on that, but you'll find that when you look this up, that if you have it in the on position, it won't really do anything for you in Microsoft Flight Simulator because it just doesn't have that capability. So by turning it into ultra, it overrides the setting, so to speak. Next, we're gonna keep the max frame rate and the global settings. I keep that in the off position because I find that getting higher frames for me gives me better gameplay. So I just keep that in the off position and then you could always just come down here and tick that off just to make sure it stays off for you. The OpenGL rendering, that is set to auto. Next would be the power management mode. Power management mode, we have two different options here, either normal or prefer maximum performance, or you could use global settings. But again, I always recommend to set these in here specific to the game. So we're gonna set that to prefer maximum performance. The shader cache is gonna be set in the on position. And also texture filtering, we're gonna leave that off. Now this is gonna really help if you start to see a shimmer off of objects in the background. So for the negative LOD bias, we're gonna make sure that that is in the clamp option. Next, we have the texture filtering quality and we can just make sure that that's set in the quality option. Now, you can play around with this as well. If you have a lower to mid range system, you could check the either performance or high performance. And what this is gonna do for you when you do click that, it's gonna change some of these other settings here that we just changed. So you're gonna have to use this and test it out on your own. I found no difference in FPS when I change between quality and performance. Now, the next option here would be the texture filtering trilinear optimization. I like to leave that in the off position. Now, here's one thing that will happen though. If you do start messing around with the texture filtering quality and turn it on high performance, remember I told you it's gonna change some things here for you. Now, one of the things that's gonna turn the texture filtering in the on position and that can give you shimmering objects you'll also see that the texture filtering trilinear optimization is in the on position for high performance but watch what happens when I turn this back to quality up here on the texture filtering it does turn back off but down here on the texture filtering trilinear optimization is still left in the on position and it clearly states down here in the bottom that select off for the best image quality. So it's kind of confusing, but we want to make sure that goes in the off position. If you start messing around with the texture filtering and you want the higher quality image. Underneath of that, we have the threaded optimization and we just leave that in the auto position. Triple buffering, we leave that off. And vertical sync, here's where we're gonna control those vertical sync features that we left off inside of Microsoft Flight Simulator right here. In the vertical sync menu, we have a couple different options that we can choose. Now down here in the bottom, you can see, and it will give you descriptions of each of the different options. I've tested most of these options, and I've found that the best one to use 
to give you the highest frame rate with no tearing and no stuttering. Today, Junior? Is going to be the fast vertical sync option. Underneath of that, we're going to make sure the virtual reality pre rendered frames are one. And then we can hit apply to all of these settings. Now, for the VR users, I use the exact same NVIDIA settings that you see here for VR as well. So if you're going to flip flop back and forth, you don't have to change any other settings. They all stay the same. So that's another plus. There is one more important setting here that you cannot change in the program setting mode. So to change this setting, and this is very important, especially if you are running in developer mode and you are limited by an RDR thread. So right here where it says RDR thread, if you're noticing that you are limited by RDR thread all the time and you can't get over 30 or 40 FPS, I'm going to show you how to eliminate that problem right now. So you need to go over to your global settings, and this is why it's so important to have specific settings for individual programs. But unfortunately, this setting is going to carry over to everything. You can't do anything about it. If you come down here to multi-frame sampled AA, MFAA, you want to make sure that this setting here is in the off position. If you don't have this in the off position and you have it on, that will give you that limited by RDR thread. So just make sure that that's changed because again, in the program setting, if you scroll up, you can see it, but it says not supported for this application, but it very well does change the application. So you just need to make sure in your global settings that that is in the off position. The other thing that I wanted to talk to you about now was the game mode setting. The best thing to do for game mode is to just turn it off, especially if you're using a newer 20 series or 30 series card, game mode is not gonna help you at all. And same goes if you hit the graphics settings in the hardware accelerated GPU scheduling, if you're noticing that you've got a lot of crashes all the time. Crash and burn, huh, Mav? You really want to come in here and make sure that this is in the off position because this will give you a ton of crashes. Next down here in the bottom, you want to highlight the Microsoft Flight Simulator and left click on it and then you can go to the options. You can then select the performance for the GPU for that particular application. You just want to tick that and then hit the save button. That's going to make sure that with Microsoft Flight Simulator, you're getting the optimal performance. So that takes care of those two settings for you. And again, they are very important that you make sure that they are both in the off position. Okay, so the first thing that I want to go over with VR settings are going to be my in-game Microsoft Flight Sim settings. So let's just go over to that real quick and let's go through the list. The render scaling is going to be at 100%. That is essential that this stays at 100%, especially when you see the tool that we're going to be using next. Now you can pause this as we go down. And again, if you have any questions on any of it, drop a comment down below. And if we go all the way to the bottom, I think one of the biggest things that's going to help us with FPS is that we turn the glass cockpit refresh rate down to low. Again, Bloom is one of those options that depending on the situation, you may want to use it and you may not want to use it. Now I found with ambient occlusion that it really helps in VR to enhance the interior of the cockpit. Anything over medium though, seems to have a hit on FPS. At least for me, it does. Now, if we go up to windshield effects, I've got that on high. That doesn't seem to have any difference on FPS. The shadow maps I have at 1536 and terrain shadows at 256. These are going to affect FPS and it's also going to affect whether you get that stutter free or smooth VR experience. Above that is water waves. 
Here's another one. If you really like flying near water, turning the waterways down to low is going to really help your FPS. Texture synthesis, I have set at ultra. I've had no FPS difference whether I went from ultra down to low. Didn't make a difference. Oh, and down here on the cube map reflections, anything over 192 seemed to give me an FPS hit, so I just left it at 192. Texture super sampling. This is hit or miss for me, and I'm still playing around with this in VR. I use 4x4. I've turned it off. I've turned it on all the way up to 8x8. Let me know your thoughts on this. Does it help you out for your VR? And what type of VR set are you using? Post down below in the comments and let us know. The anneotropic filtering, I probably said it wrong, but I leave that on 16 times. My texture resolution is on high. Biometric clouds is on high. Here's another one of those settings that if you are really hurting for FPS in VR and you're set your volumetric clouds on ultra, it is really gonna hurt your frames. Anything over high really kills it for you. So keep that in mind when you're setting these. Now objects level of detail, I don't really seem that this makes much of a difference either as far as FPS. So you can crank that up to 150 or until it starts hurting you and then I would back it off a little. Terrain level of detail, I just leave that set on 100 because right now my settings are pretty much perfect for my setup. And what I'm getting right now is a flickering back and forth between limited by GPU and limited by CPU. That tells me that all my settings are pretty much equalized and it's just going back and forth by which one can't keep up with the other. Okay, so next I want to talk about some of my other settings. Now this is going to be very specific to using the Windows Mixed Reality tool. So if you are a Steam VR user, I highly recommend that you switch over to using the OpenXR developer tool. If you're a Steam VR user, you may not need to download the OpenXR developer tool to use with the next piece of software we're going to be going over. Instead, you could just use the Steam VR version. You'll know if this is going to work properly once we open the Scaler application and it'll tell you if it's active or not. If not, then you will need to follow the instructions on the link that I have posted down below so that you can install the Windows OpenXR version instead. In any case, if you're not familiar with the OpenXR developer tool, all you need to do to get this bad boy is to go down to your Microsoft store, open it up, type in OpenXR, and when you do, you just click on the application, you hit the download button, and now you've got the Windows Mixed Reality OpenXR runtime tool. Now, if you are a Steam VR user, and you open this for the first time, you're gonna see a little button here that's gonna say, activate Windows Mixed Reality OpenXR runtime tool. Now, what that's gonna do is change your runtime tool in Steam VR from the Steam VR version to the OpenXR version. I'll go over how you're gonna change that in the future if you wanna go back to it. It's pretty simple. So once we do that, we can go over here to the system status and now you should see a bunch of different things populate up. Over in the developer section, we have a couple different options here. Now once you download this for the first time, it's probably gonna look just like this. You wanna make sure that you come down here to the latest preview OpenXR runtime and just check that in the on position. And then we wanna tick the box next to custom render scaling. We wanna make sure that is set at also 100%. just like inside of Microsoft Flight Simulator. We have that set at 100%. I'm gonna show you why right now. So this is a new tool that we can use for VR. And this is a great scaling tool that can be used to render the images at a lower resolution and then upscale it back to our headset. But that's not the coolest thing. The best part of it is it adds sharpness to the image and makes that image much more crisp and clear for us. So just as you would in either the OpenXR runtime tool or in the VR settings in Microsoft Flight Simulator, 
you can adjust the render scale to a lower resolution. The problem with that is, is when it upscales it back to your headset, it doesn't add any sharpness to it. So you're getting kind of a blurry-ish image. So by using the OpenXR NIS scaling tool, we can now set this to adjust the scaling for us. So if we take a look at the top of this tool, it says OpenXR resolution 3152 by 3084. Oh, by the way, if you don't know how to get this tool or if you're unfamiliar with it, I'll post a link down below. I highly recommend you go and grab this tool. It's very easy to install and just as easy to uninstall. I go over both processes, so don't worry if you don't like it, you can always get rid of it. But I highly recommend you go down below and at least check it out because it can really enhance your VR gameplay. Let's get back to the tool and some of the configuration settings that I have. Now, the first thing you'll notice at the top next to the OpenXR resolution, that it's gonna tell us if the NIS scaler is active or not. Now, if you click on the system status and go all the way to the bottom, under the API layers, we're gonna see the API layer of November NIS scaler. That's gonna let us know that the scaling tool has been installed properly. We do go over this in the install video. So again, I highly recommend you check that out. The other option that we have here is motion reprojection. I leave that disabled. I honestly don't need it. I do like when I turn it on because it does make things really, really smooth. But there's so many different artifacts that occur that it just really degrades from the smoothness that you get in other areas of the sim. Anyway, let's get back to the NIS scaler tool. So underneath of the OpenXR resolution, we have the application selection. If we tick on this menu, we can either use this for all of our VR applications, or we can use this just for Microsoft Flight Simulator. You can also set up multiple profiles. So if we click on all other applications, you have a profile that you can set for all other applications, and you have a profile that you can set for Microsoft Flight Simulator. If you choose that you wish to add a new application, then you can just click on the new application as well as there's instructions on the GitHub. That's also listed in the link below. Anyway, so we're gonna click on Microsoft Flight Simulator. And one of the most important things that you need to do is that you need to tick the box that says enable NIS scaling. If you don't tick this box, this will not apply any scaling to your image. Now here are the settings that I use where most people would have to set your custom render scaling to 70 to get decent frames as well as a smooth gameplay. Well, in my situation, I don't need to go down to 70 anymore when I use the scaling tool. I have it set right around 88 to 89 and I play with the sharpness. I have gone with the sharpness down low. I've also went all the way up high and I seem to like it better when I'm around that 85 to 90 range. Anything over 90, I start getting a little bit too sharp on edges. Now I'm also using the HP Reverb 2, and this is gonna vary greatly upon all the different VR headsets that are out there. So again, just take this and use it as a base guide, and then move it all around to see what gets you the best FPS. What I recommend to do is just to start turning this down until you get a respectable 35 to 40 FPS, and then you can mess with your sharpness at that point. Now, just keep in mind that anytime you're gonna modify or change any of the settings here, that you need to jump out of VR mode from Microsoft Flight Simulator. So you're just gonna make sure that you go to VR mode and just switch to your desktop mode. Once you've made the appropriate changes to your NIS scaling tool, then go right back into Microsoft Flight Simulator and switch back into VR and check out the new picture quality from the new settings. Again, monitor your FPS and then adjust accordingly. All right, so that's just gonna about wrap us up for today. I hope you got a lot of information out of this and I really hope it helped you out. If you haven't seen the new video on the new OpenXR NIS scaler, again, I highly recommend you check that out down in the description. I want to thank everybody for joining us. If you haven't done so already, make sure you go down below and hit that subscribe and tick that little bell. And if this video did help you out today, smash on that thumbs up button.
Well, to all my flight simmers out there around the world, have a happy new year, and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching, everybody.